Hi everyone, uh, today is Monday, first working day of the week, which means we are going to solve Advent of Code again, of course. Um, let's go and let's go and tweet about it. Because I just started. I just started. We have our task number six today, which is yesterday's task was like a few, like a screen and a half, I would say. Which means they are starting to get harder, progressively harder. Okay. Um, <laughs> and we let's start. Let's read. Lantern fish. Okay, so this is probably fish with. Uh, Lamp? No, this is not what I expected. But yeah, I expected this one. Interesting. Okay, the sea floor is getting steeper. Maybe the slight keys got carried this way. A massive school of glowing lantern fish swims past. They must spawn quickly to reach such large numbers. Maybe exponentially quickly. You should model the growth rate to be sure. Although you know nothing about the specific species of lantern fish, you make some guesses about the attributes. Surely each lantern fish creates a new lantern fish once every seven days. However, this process isn't necessarily synchronized between every lantern fish. One lantern fish might have two days left until it creates another lantern fish, while another might have four. So you can model each fish a single number that represents the number of days until it creates a new lantern fish. Furthermore, uh, your reason your lantern fish would surely need slightly longer before it's capable of producing more lantern two more days for its first cycle. So suppose you have a lantern fish with an internal timer value of three. After one day, its internal timer will become two, another day one, then zero. After another day, its internal timer will reset to six. And it creates a new lantern fish with internal timer of eight. And now there are days the first would have a turn of five, and the second lantern fish would have a turn of ten. Okay, cool. Another fish that creates a new fish resets its timer to six, not seven, because zero is included. The new lantern fish starts with an internal of eight, and doesn't start counting down until the next day. Okay, uh, realizing that you are trying to do the submarine automatically produce a list of the ages of several hundred nearby lantern fish, your bottle input. Uh-huh. Okay. Each day zero becomes six and in this example the total twenty-six fish and eight day and after eighty days there would be total of five uh, find a way to simulate lantern fish. How many lantern fish would there be after eighty days? Okay, so our Example is this. Let's put it here. This is our example. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and input is this. Okay. Actually, actually we. We can keep it in, in here, right? Okay. Um, hmm. oh, good news is we it is very easy to parse. And to parse it, you just um, split and Map V split input comma uh, parse lock. Okay, so this is fish, right? 
and basically what we need to do is we need to reduce we need to reduce and say don't need to reduce actually let's write a function called progress and it takes fish and it returns new fish right so this progress would be hmm. what we do is we iterate okay so what we do is map v fish Okay, yeah, so we see if it's zero, we return six, otherwise we do one less. And here we use repeat. of so new kind of like that right right what's what's wrong this is wrong uh, no. Okay, um, this is our progress, and let's yeah, let's write a far parse function anyway. It's very simple, but. Okay, let's try parse example. Uh, what? Yeah, because I got it wrong. Okay, parse example, progress. So after one day we will get two three two zero one which is seems correct and after that we will have one two one six zero eight and after that we'll have zero five six seven eight yeah it seems seems right right so that's our solution basically so what we need to do is um, say 18 days right and yeah what we need is i think the, the function that we need is called we don't need repeatedly it's either iterate yeah we need iterate right uh so basically say iterate progress parse input right and then we say return for example 18 of it so 18 is 606 blah, blah, blah. yeah this looks right and we need not 18 but 80 yeah we actually need day and um, part one input 80 now this is how we solve it um Iterate 
rate okay and let's see seems correct and this is how much we get three eight three three eight three one six zero it was too easy it was too easy i don't know yeah and it's probably just because closure is such a nice language right so basically we we decrease every number in, in what we have and we add as many eights uh, as many zeros are there not decrease we decrease we're up to six okay and so lucky for us we didn't have any off by one errors Okay, suppose the lantern fish live forever and have unlimited food and space. Would they take over the entire ocean? After 256 days in example above, there would be a total of blah, blah, blah. Okay. So basically, <laughs> part two is part one. No, part two is just part one input 256 so is basically the same algorithm right okay even for original example now we're starting to get it starts to get hard because growth is exponential okay okay and this is an example we start with just five fish but i i suspect it wouldn't be that much different for input uh huh. Because like it's exponential, it doesn't really depend on. So what can we do? What uh, could be done? Well, this creates a lazy sequence. Maybe not. Um, too good. We can also figure out how much we can allocate ahead of time, right? And it just can be that the sequence is getting too long, right? And we can actually, you know what? Okay, a few things. Let, let's first see if we have... What? Do I mean? If we have any reflection. No, it doesn't seem we have any reflection. Well, this is good. Okay. So next, 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 next. Um, so this took us 100 something milliseconds, right? So I suspect iterate is not perfect for our needs. Um, Somehow we we didn't mess this up somehow. Um, so what I was thinking is maybe iterate creates a sequence and it keeps it in memory, which would be bad for us. So maybe I'm not sure. Maybe it doesn't keep it in memory. But who knows, right? And this way we only keep the current value, right? 
So next one is maybe do this. No, it's it's slower now. Uh huh. Okay, so what I'm thinking is we use arrays instead of uh, vectors, right? And we allocate array um, ahead of time. So what do you say? We create Okay, so this is how many zeros we have, right? Count zeros fish. So new fish will be make array. We could use byte because they never go ahead of and There is byte type in Java, right? No. So there is short type, but there must be byte as well. There's character. Yes, there is byte. Of course, there is byte. Okay, this is what we do. Um, we take links of We can also simplify, kind of. You know what? We should uh, we should not try. Well, let's try to do that. But I just figured out a better way to implement this. We can actually because there is only nine possible values, right? We can actually store this nonsense as a map instead of a sequence because order doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter that there is six and zeros and six and four right what matters is there are two sixes and one zero yeah we actually order doesn't matter yeah cool 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 uh, we, yeah forget about this this is uh yeah that could have been faster probably but we don't really care um so we do frequencies right and hmm. so we do reduce kv for fish and we start in you new map and the the rule will be this. Fish days count. Right, this. Okay, so we know for the day and for the day x we have count x so basically we soak uh, so if day is zero we soak fish eight count right otherwise we soak it's not fish it's um, actually 
accumulator or fish prime, I don't know. Um, deck day. There must be some somewhere. There must be plus operator somewhere. Right, but I, I couldn't figure out where it is. Like if we had zero, we spawn new fish. As many zeros as are there, we spawn that many new fish, right? But for everything else, we make a day one less. Like we have eight, we have a hundred for day eight, right? So we make it a hundred for day seven. There must be a plus somewhere. I don't understand where it is. Well, let's see, let's see. Um, let's say progress parse input. Okay. Yeah, this is already <laughs> super on. Let's say we just parse input. Oh yeah, sorry, we need the example. Let's say we parse example. So there are two threes, one four, one one, and one and one two, right? We progress that and we get two twos, one three, one zero, and one one. What if we progress this again? It's not growing, right? We're losing something. Yes, because zero wraps around and uh -huh. Yeah, we actually do fish a sock as count and update because the fish that gives a burst also resets to six, right? Update six if nil plus zero uh, count. Yeah, because that fish goes to eight and six. That that's our plus operator. And here we fish update the day f nil plus zero count, right? And what we do is here we actually take count fish and we reduce plus false fish. Okay, 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 so yeah, this is huge number and we need it printed so I don't copy it. Yay! And it's the right answer, of course. Cool. Um, yeah, that was it hard. It wasn't hard, but we did naive implementation first and it was if implementation was naive, right? Um, I like it. I actually like it. It's, it's nice. This is also nice. Yeah. It is exponential growth, but Cool, let's uh, commit it and maybe try this uh, 2018 again. Year 2021, day six. 
and we forgot main here. Yes, like that. Boom. Let me stop restart recording.